Good morning. How can I direct your call? This is Paul Garzon speaking. May I talk to Mr. Maxwell, please? Just a moment, please. It's a Mr. Garcon for you. Take a message, please. I'm afraid Mr. Maxwell is away from his desk at the moment. May I take a message? I'm an engineer, and I work for HKE. I'm looking for a new position, and I want to speak to him. I can see him anytime he wants, but it must be before the end of the week. Fine, Mr. Garcon. I will relay your message to him as soon as he comes in. Thank you. You're welcome. What did he want? Well, he said he was an engineer and that he wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. He said he was looking for a new position. Uh -huh. He also said that he could see you anytime you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the next week. Did he leave a phone number? No, he didn't. <laughs> Good morning. How can I direct your call? This is Paul Garzon speaking. May I talk to Mr. Maxwell, please? Just a moment, please. It's a Mr. Garcon for you. Take a message, please. I'm afraid Mr. Maxwell is away from his desk at the moment. May I take a message? I'm an engineer, and I work for HKE. I'm looking for a new position, and I want to speak to him. I can see him anytime he wants but it must be before the end of the week. Fine, Mr. Garcon. I will relay your message to him as soon as he comes in. Thank you. You're welcome. What did he want? Well, he said he was an engineer and that he wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. He said he was looking for a new position. Uh -huh. He also said that he could see you anytime you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the next week. Did he leave a phone number? No, he didn't. <laughs> Good morning. How can I direct your call? This is Paul Garzon speaking. May I talk to Mr. Maxwell, please? Just a moment, please. It's a Mr. Garcon for you. Take a message, please. I'm afraid Mr. Maxwell is away from his desk at the moment. May I take a message? I'm an engineer, and I work for HKE. I'm looking for a new position, and I want to speak to him. I can see him anytime he wants, but it must be before the end of the week. Fine, Mr. Garcon. I will relay your message to him as soon as he comes in. Thank you. You're welcome. What did he want? Well, he said he was an engineer and that he wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. He said he was looking for a new position. Uh -huh. He also said that he could see you anytime you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the next week. Did he leave a phone number? No, he didn't. Next case, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm here to protest this uh, parking citation. What did you say? I said I was here to protest this parking citation. All right, then. Uh, state your full name and occupation, please. Uh, my name is Rupert Maxwell. I am president of TAG Engineering. Could you speak up? I said my name was Rupert Maxwell, president of TAG Engineering. And uh, what do you want, uh, Mr. Falwell? Maxwell. I said my name was Maxwell. I'm well, too, but uh, what is it you want from the court? Uh, I've been waiting to present my case all morning, Your Honor. Say what? I said I had been waiting all morning to present my case. And a, a nice case it is, but uh, uh, what are you here to ask the court? I want to protest this unjust citation. What was that you said? I said I wanted to protest this unjust citation. You mustn't shout, sir. This is a court of law. What? 
I said you didn't have to shout. I didn't shout. What? What did you say? Uh, I said uh, I hadn't shouted. Listen, Mr. Uh, Maxwell. Mm. I thought you said your name was Falwell. No, no. Look, Your Honor. Speak I... up. What? I told you to speak up. L look, Your Honor, um, I must leave. You must what? I must leave. I said I, I had to leave. Let's, let's forget the whole thing. But how do you plead? Guilty. Guilty as charged. Next case, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm here to protest this uh, parking citation. What did you say? I said I was here to protest this parking citation. All right, then. Uh, state your full name and occupation, please. Uh, my name is Rupert Maxwell. I am president of TAG Engineering. Could you speak up? I said my name was Rupert Maxwell, president of TAG Engineering. And uh, what do you want, uh, Mr. Falwell? Maxwell. I said my name was Maxwell. I'm well, too, but uh, what is it you want from the court? Uh, I've been waiting to present my case all morning, Your Honor. Say what? I said I had been waiting all morning to present my case. And a, a nice case it is, but uh, uh, what are you here to ask the court? I want to protest this unjust citation. What was that you said? I said I wanted to protest this unjust citation. You mustn't shout, sir. This is a court of law. What? I said you didn't have to shout. I didn't shout. What? What did you say? Uh, I said uh, I hadn't shouted. Listen, Mr. Uh, Maxwell. Mm. I, I thought you said your name was Falwell. No, no. Look, Your Honor. Speak I... up. What? I told you to speak up. L look, Your Honor, um, I must leave. You must what? I must leave. I said I, I had to leave. Let's, let's forget the whole thing. But how do you plead? Guilty. Guilty as charged. Next case, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm here to protest this uh, parking citation. What did you say? I said I was here to protest this parking citation. All right, then. Uh, state your full name and occupation, please. Uh, my name is Rupert Maxwell. I am president of TAG Engineering. Could you speak up? I said my name was Rupert Maxwell, president of TAG Engineering. And uh, what do you want, uh, Mr. Falwell? Maxwell. I said my name was Maxwell. I'm well, too, but... Uh, what is it you want from the court? Uh, I've been waiting to present my case all morning, Your Honor. Say what? I said I had been waiting all morning to present my case. And a, a nice case it is, but uh, uh, what are you here to ask the court? I want to protest this unjust citation. What was that you said? I said I wanted to protest this unjust citation. You mustn't shout, sir. This is a court of law. What? I said you didn't have to shout. I didn't shout. What? What did you say? Uh, I said uh, I hadn't shouted. Listen, Mr. Uh, Maxwell. Mm. I, I thought you said your name was Falwell. No, no. Look, Your Honor. Speak I... up. What? I told you to speak up. L look, Your Honor, um, I must leave. You must what? I must leave. I said I, I had to leave. 
let's let's forget the whole thing. But how do you plead? Guilty. Guilty as charged. Today, we are going to return to our lesson in reported speech. We will be doing our second lesson in reported speech. Now, you remember our last unit. We can report speech in two ways. Directly, using direct speech, or indirectly, using indirect speech. Now, do you remember in the dialogue that we just watched for this unit? Do you remember when the man calls up, the engineer calls up and talks to Rene about the job that he's hoping that he might be able to get with tag engineering. Let's watch that scene again, shall we? Here we go. Good morning, how can I direct your call? This is Paul Garzon speaking. May I talk to Mr. Maxwell, please? Just a moment, please. It's a Mr. Garzon for you. Take a message, please. I'm afraid Mr. Maxwell is away from his desk at the moment. May I take a message? I'm an engineer and I work for HKE. I'm looking for a new position, and I want to speak to him. I can see him any time he wants, but it must be before the end of the week. Fine, Mr. Garçon. I will relay your message to him as soon as he comes in. Thank you. You're welcome. What did he want? Well, he said he was an engineer and that he wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. He said he was looking for a new position. Mm -hmm. He also said that he could see you anytime you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the next week. Did he leave a phone number? No, he didn't. <laughs> okay, that was the phone conversation. Now, let's look at what that engineer said to Rene, okay? He said, I am an engineer, and I work for HKE. I am looking for a new position, and I want to speak to him. Meaning, of course, Mr. Maxwell. I can see him anytime, but it must be before the end of the week. Now, of course, when Mr. Maxwell comes in, he wants to know what is it that this man said? What did he say? Right? So, Rene tells Mr. Maxwell, in other words, Rene reports what this man said to Mr. Maxwell. Let's listen to her. What did he want? Well, he said he was an engineer and that he wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. He said he was looking for a new position. Mm -hmm. He also said that he could see you anytime you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the next week. Did he leave a phone number? No, he didn't. <laughs> okay. Now, what is it that Rene says, reporting with indirect speech, what it was that Paul Garçon had said to her. Well, first of all, she says, he said he was an engineer and he wanted to see you. Okay, then she says, he said he was looking for a new position. Notice how all the things that were present tense in the original direct quote are now in the past or the past continuous, right? He also said he could see you 
any time you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the week. And now we're seeing that some of the modals, the modal verbs that Paul used, like saying, I can see him any time, have changed to conditionals, right? He said he could see you any time you wanted, but it had to be before the end of the week. So, you also notice, of course, that when you are reporting speech, you also have to be aware of what? You have to be aware of possessive pronouns and of pronouns in general. Because Paul says, of course, that I want to see him. Rene, of course, has to say he wanted to see you. Okay? Actually, I think he wanted to speak to him, didn't he? So, now, that is the way we do it. So, now, thank you very much for the TV. And let's just go back to our regular blackboard, or green board, if you want to be literal about it. Direct speech. He said, quote, I am an engineer. We call that a direct quote. How about indirect speech? which, of course, we also call reported speech. He said that he was an engineer. Now, let's review some of the different tenses that we use when we are converting direct to indirect speech. If the statement is in the simple present tense, it becomes in the indirect version the simple past tense. So the statement, he said, I work hard in the indirect report is going to be, he said that he worked hard. Simple present, I work hard becomes present, uh, the uh, simple past, he worked hard. Present continuous becomes past continuous. So he said, I am working hard will be reported as he said that he was working hard. See that? How about present perfect tense? In the indirect version, a present perfect statement will become past perfect, logically enough, right? So, again, we'll use that verb work. He said, I have worked hard, which is a present perfect statement. He said that he had worked hard. Present perfect to past perfect. Simple past is going to also become past perfect. So, he said, I worked hard, is going to become, he said that he had worked hard. Same as the present, perfect. Simple future tense, indirect speech, is going to become the conditional. So, the statement, he said, I will work hard, is going to become, in the indirect speech, he said that he would work hard. Okay? And now here is another one that we did not talk about last time. If we have a statement in the imperative, Remember the imperative from book way back in book one, unit 13, I believe? In the indirect speech, you're going to use the infinitive. So, for example, if the direct quote is, he told me, work hard, the report of that conversation would be, he told me to work hard. You see that? Work hard, the infinitive, or the uh, imperative, becomes the infinitive. To work hard. He told me, work hard. 
He told me to work hard. Okay? Direct speech, we have the modal can. In the indirect version, can becomes could. Okay? So, I can work. I told you I could work. Must, I must work, would become had to. I told you I had to work. Have to also becomes had to. I have to work. I just told you I had to work. And may usually becomes might. I may have to work. I just told you I might have to work. Okay? I think it's time for some exercises. These Exercises are also very good ways to reinforce and to learn these different forms. So fill in the blanks. He said, I work hard. So report that as he said that he, what's the simple present going to become? He said that he worked hard becomes the simple past. How about the simple past? What does it become? He said, I worked hard. He said that, fill in the blank. He said, I worked hard, report. He said that he had worked hard. Simple past becomes past perfect. He said, I am working hard. He said that. OK, what's the present continuous going to become? He said, I am working hard. He said that he was working hard. Present continuous becomes past continuous. He said, I have worked hard. He said that. He said, I have worked hard. Present perfect. So that's going to become what? He said that he had worked hard. Present perfect converts to past perfect. When we change these direct quotes to indirect reports. He said, I was working hard. Becomes, he said that. What's this going to be? He said, I was working hard, is past continuous. And that's going to become, he said that he had been working hard. Becomes past perfect continuous, doesn't it? He said, I was working hard. He said that he had been working hard. OK, now about this. He said, I will work hard. He said that. OK, this is a simple future statement. He said, I will work hard. And that's going to become what? He said that. He would work hard. That becomes conditional. He said, I will be working hard. That's going to become, he said that he. It's actually quite simple. He said, I will be working hard, future continuous. And that changes to, he said that he would be working hard. We just change that future will to the conditional, 
and then still include the uh, be working hard. How about this one? He said, I can work hard. He said that. Remember I showed you what can becomes. He said that I can work hard becomes he said that he could work hard. He said, I have to work hard. He said that. He said that he had to work hard. Have to becomes had to. Just by the way as what other word would become had to? Must. I must work hard would become also he said that he had to work hard. Okay, let's switch to the same exercise, but some other examples now besides our work example. If you've noticed, we've been following that verb work through all the tenses through this entire series, haven't we? She told me, I am going to the beach. That's the direct quote. That's just what she said to me. Now, fill in the blank. She told me that she told me I am going to the beach. She told me that she was going to the beach. Present continuous becomes past continuous. Okay. He said, I was at my office. So, he said that he, remember we're also going to have to change pronouns too, right? He said, I was at my office, simple past is going to become what? Past perfect, isn't it? He said that he had been at his office, right? <coughs> Excuse me. He told me, oh, I lost money in Las Vegas. He told me that he direct. He told me I lost money in Las Vegas. Indirect. He told me that he had lost money in Las Vegas. <coughs> that money is just slipping away, isn't it? Monica said, I have learned a lot at LEI. Report. Monica said that. Okay. Monica said, using the present perfect tense, I have learned a lot at LEI. Monica said that she had learned a lot at LEI. We use the past perfect. He told me, I have been doing my exercises. Report that. He said that. Change the pronoun also. So, present perfect. He told me, I have been doing my exercises. The reported speech will use the past perfect. He said that he had been doing his exercises. Actually, this is present perfect continuous and past perfect continuous, isn't it? Exactly. He said that he had been doing 
his exercises. How about this one? He told me, stop. That's the direct quote. And that uses what? The imperative. So here we go. What is the report of that imperative? Do you remember? I told you this. He told me, stop. And the imperative becomes, he told me to stop. The imperative becomes the infinitive, which is the verb form that uses that word to, the preposition. He said, I can fix the window. Okay? He said that he what? What's can become? He said, I can fix the window. Becomes, he said that he could fix the window. Okay? And how about this one? He told me, I've been waiting. I have been, in other words, waiting for the bus for an hour. I've been waiting for the bus for an hour. He told me that Good. He told me, I've been waiting for the bus for an hour. He told me that he had been waiting for the bus for an hour. And you know what I could have done here is actually made that into a contraction. Since up here is it says, I've been, I could have said, he told me that he'd been waiting for the bus for an hour. Uh, I didn't, but I could have. And it says, so this is what? The present perfect continuous becoming the past perfect continuous. I've been waiting. He had been waiting. Okay? Our magic board's just a little sluggish today, isn't it? She said, I won't marry you. Use me in this case as if she said, I won't marry you to you. Okay? She said that. What is won't going to become when you report it? Okay. She said, I won't marry you. She said that she wouldn't marry me. And I was devastated. Okay, that becomes conditional, doesn't it? I won't marry you changes to she wouldn't marry me. You must take an umbrella. It is going to rain, she said. Now for this one, I'd like you to use I. Okay. As if, again, as if she were, as if she were talking directly to you. She said that I, let's do the up to umbrella first, okay? She said that I, what is that must going to become? She said that I had to take an umbrella because, why? She said that I had to take an umbrella because, what was her reason? She said that I had to take an umbrella because it was going to rain. She said, hey, you must take an umbrella. It is going to rain. Well, you must is going to become had to and is going to rain 
becomes was going to ring. Okay? She said I had to take it that I had to take an umbrella because it was going to rain. Imagine. Okay, now we're now going to switch to a different kind of exercise. Let's say Monica called you. And what did she say? Well, here is the direct quote. Monica said, I'll see you this evening. So this time, for this exercise, I'd like you to pretend that Monica really did call you. And this time, I will ask you, what did she say? So you answer as if this call actually was to you. She said what? We'll do this one together. Monica's direct statement was, I'll see you this evening. So it's going to change to, she said she would see me this evening. Monica called you. Her message is, I'll see you this evening. I ask you, what did she say? She said she would see me this evening. David called you. What did he say? Okay. He said, I was working late. So, report that to me. What did he say? He said, he... Well, the past continuous is going to become the past perfect continuous. He said, he had been working late. Got that? He said he had been working late. Mr. Maxwell called you. Well, what did he say? You don't have to type that report. Okay? Report that to me now as if Mr. Maxwell had told you, you don't have to type that report. He told Do you suppose he said, he told me I didn't have to type that report because don't becomes didn't. From simple present, you don't have to type that report to the simple past. He, he said, I didn't have to type that report. Donna called you. What did she say? She said, Clayton wants to go swimming. So, tell me what that's going to be in an indirect report. Clayton wants to go swimming. What did she say? I'll tell you. She said Clayton wanted to go swimming. Right? The simple present becomes the simple past. <gasps> Queen Elizabeth I called you. That's amazing. She's been dead for quite a long time. What did she say? She said, you must come to court immediately. You must come to court immediately. What did she say? As if, again, she had asked you, or told you, because she's a queen after all. You must come to court immediately. She said, I...
you must come to court immediately, would be reported as, she said, I had to come to court immediately. She said, I had to come to court immediately. Court, by the way, in this sense, is where, uh, you know, kings and queens would sit in the throne room and that would be their court. The court was the, were all the people around a king or queen. It's not, it's, it's the same word as uh, a, a law court where there are judges and lawyers and so on. Same word, but it means something different. Kelsey called you. Well, what did she say? I have to make my dad a sandwich before I can come over. Okay, she said, I have to make my dad a sandwich before I can come over. So, tell me, what did she say? Let's do this also in two parts, since we have two verbs here. And the first one, let's take to up to sandwich. She said she, watch those pronoun or those uh, possessives. She said, she said she had to make her dad a sandwich. And then the second part, before She said she had to make her dad a sandwich before she could come over. Can is going to become could. Kelsey called you. I have to make my dad a sandwich before I can come over. What did she say? She said she had to make her dad a sandwich before she could come over. Mr. Mugwump called you. What did he want? What did he say? He says, be here in an hour. Now watch out. There's a trick here. Be here in an hour. What did Mr. Mugwump say? Tell me. He said, Try, just try. He said, okay, Mr. Mugwump says, be here in an hour. This is how you report it. He said to be there in an hour. So there are two things you had to know here, right? One is that you had to know to change the imperative to the infinitive. Be here in an hour becomes, he said, to be there in an hour. The other thing you had to, to realize, and this is where I was trying to warn you, is that here to Mr. Mugwump is going to be there to the person you're reporting his comment to, or his order, or whatever we want to call this. So you would have to say, he said to be there in an hour, because to him, here is here, but to you and to the person that you're telling this to, Mr. Mugwump's here is there. You understand? I hope so. Let's try another one. Oh, I called you. And what did I say? Be sure to bring your notebook to class. So what did I say? And you say, you said, and again, make this addressed right to you. So tell me, teacher, you said, be sure to bring your notebook to class. What did I say? You said to be sure to bring my notebook to class. Okay, you see? 
So the imperative here becomes the infinitive. Be sure to bring becomes you said to be sure to bring. Your notebook to class is going to become my notebook to class. Okay? What else did I say? I want to thank you for learning English with me here at LEI. Okay? What else did I say? You said Okay, are you up on all of the things you've got to change here? Lots of pronouns and little possessives and things, right? I guess it's all pronouns. Ready? I want to thank you for learning English with me here at LEI. You said you wanted to thank me for learning English with you here at LEI. And I didn't on purpose change the here to a there in this sentence because as far as I'm concerned, whenever you're watching this video series in your living room, you, like me, are here at LEI. Thanks again. And I'll see you in Unit 12.